All right, guys, in this video, we'll go through the hop up chamber for the rifle we're gonna build. And what we picked is the Silent Industries Alpha chamber. <clears throat> now, what makes this different from, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a max chamber is this one kind of just the lip tension on your bucking. So what's the lip tension? It's, uh, when you push it inside your uh, chamber, the step that is inside, it's gonna either squeeze it too much that your BB doesn't go through, or it just falls right through. Falls right through is generally okay if I have a traditional AG. So say you have a standard setup, yeah. Your sector start rotate, it pulls back the nozzle, slowly re releasing it. This would work up to like, <clears throat> uh, I would say up to 25 rounds per second, this setup is okay. You don't, you don't throw a stroke, but I would prefer if you stay a little bit above 20. <clears throat> I would say <clears throat> with a, let's say a 25K motor or 24K motor, something just mid 20, uh, paired with 16 to one gears. That's what you get. That's a sweet spot that you need least amount of tuning. But we're building a, we are going to the max here. So this is a regular case. You have a target place, slow release of that. So I, and if you don't have pre-cocking on, the BB goes up, you start the shooting cycle, it goes back, it goes forward, then it shoots. That's all good, what, because usually you have the hop applied. Once you have the hop applied, it's gonna stop the BB from rolling out. However, once you get into advanced builds, like you want fast rate of fire, you will want to start chopping the, uh, the top plate. plate. Uh, <clears throat> so once you go to that, you don't have this gradual release on the top plate anymore. It's gonna just like DSG, it's gonna, once it goes here, imagine it doesn't have anything, doesn't have this long part, it just cut here, like a DSG, it goes here, just kicks right forward after, right after this bit. So goes here, then just sudden drop. Now that if you have, if you are running light with BBs and you use, you try to conserve the energy of your shot, you, you, you would have something like either, um, it, you want to buck in with a patch under it. So you're not like pressing it really hard. In that case, your BB doesn't stop always in the same position because it kicked forward. And sometimes it kicks too much, it even would roll out if you have something like a R hop. In that case, you need to start tuning the leap tension on your bucking. So you just give the right amount of tension on it so your BB is decelerated right at the lip, just like in the modified X range bucking, you have the, the, the rings inside to slow the BB down. Same concept. So this, this one, it comes with these shims, the white and black, I believe. And these have a chamfer inside. They go over, so this black one is not doing anything yet. It's loose, I can see that. Try the white one. And this one, oh, actually this one is squeezing it more than the, uh, so this one squeezes and white one is larger. You can see the gap. This is not the best bucking for this uh, demonstration. Let, let's try this one here. I like this bucking. Yeah, so this one is fatter around it. So with the white one, all good. If I try, if I, so this, if I were to run this stock, you know, lower PS, no nothing. I just take the white one. It give, just give me free passage of the BBs on the bucking. Or if I have more, then I would take the black one to squeeze it down. Now this is something that was never done in AEGs. 
The first one that did this, I believe, was the uh, Phoenix chamber for the MTW. The MTW, the chamber, the, the way that uh, HP engine works, for the Inferno is a blow forward now, so it just kicks forward. In case of the uh, the Hydra, it's also a spring. It just retracts first, but it's also a spring that kicks it forward. So they both act like DSTs. And these are where these things shine. It's to be able to control uh, basically how deep your BB goes. Now this is for M4. And if you don't have an M4, I mean, there are a couple other ways to do this. But for example, what I did for the SSG-63 or G36 chamber is we used an actually pretty large window cut on the inner barrel and we used a flat bucking with a slim nub in the middle. So what happens when I press down this nub in the middle, the bucking actually cave in like this. So you have these two buffer zones these two areas before the nub where this is where the pressure center pressure point is and give the back spin this is just loose and this area here it also helps to decelerate the bb without applying hop to it otherwise it's that's why it's difficult to dial in the hop if you don't have the uh if you have an r hop on a dsg or a hp engine like Back then people were like, hey, I have a, a barrel R-hop setup that works great for AG, but once I put it in with my Fusion engine or whatever, it stops doing so well. And this is the reason it's, you can have a great, so on your BB spread, the vertical spread, that's basically your hop consistency. And uh, in setups with uh, inconsistent <coughs> BB placement, you could have very good horizontal dispersion. So basically your BB is always on line, but it's just up and down. This is basically you tune these chambers for. So <clears throat> this is a chamber truth. It's a great thing that somebody finally realized these kind of issues in Airsoft and we are solving these. Now regarding the perpendicular nub movement, I think it's neat, but uh, me as a experienced tuner, I already know more or less the BB weight I'm gonna use. So for that, I was already kind of know what's, uh, what kind of bucking I would use, what kind of nub I'd use. And I usually use the same BBs for a gun. I don't deviate too much. I might go from like, sometimes there's three, sometimes there's three, uh, three twos, but I wouldn't go like zero two, to zero three six. <clears throat> but however, this is neat. It's it's there. You can uh, basically now find a barrel with the correct window cut with a good placement. Another important part is, um, if you're running a a regular bucking, try to have a one piece nut. The less material you have in between your BB and your uh, where you apply the force, which in this case would be the hop arm, the better. Otherwise, if you have, back then you have arm, then you have this uh, roller with a hole inside, which is squishy, and then you have the bucking with a big nub underneath, and it's all just squeeze. That's very inconsistent because it's very springy. Now, <clears throat> if you have a, right, you have a DSG or something like that, you don't want the bucking with a big patch. You want something more like a traditional bucking. So you, you get a little bit of the, uh, the pressure from the nub to hold it. Or you just fine tune these, yeah, it's an option. Um, then you want to have a solid nub. A solid metal nub, like preferably with just one piece pressing on the bucking. Unless you have a flat hop. If you have a flat hop, since there's barely any rubber material in game, then you can use a rubber buffer nub. Uh, you can use a rubber nub as a buffer. That's what we use for the uh, SSG-63 and the SSR-90. And these guns, they, um, they work very well. You can uh, go from 025s to 032s, barely losing any energy, and uh, they shoot great. 
So yeah, this is the uh, Sun Industries chamber. I really like it. The way it's built is very clean molded pieces. Price is on the pricey side, but uh, the feature it offers, I would say, is more important to me uh, than what a Max offers. And I think this would be great for 2B type of builds, either DSGs or uh, DMRs where you would pre-cock. Because when you pre-cock a gun, you really also want to hold the BB because it will load the BB first. It will load the chamber. Then you shoot at just barely any piston movement for you to shoot it. And while you are not shooting, you have a BB sitting inside the chamber, uh, sitting like, in yeah, inside the chamber and barrel. So you need also a precise placement to be able to hold and place a BB. In the next video, we go through the ETUs and we have all the components. And in the last video, we will build the gun.